Job chapter 4. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, All right, This is the second man speaking. Now, this is uh, uh, Esau's grandson. I'll read you from what Schofield's note says about uh, Eliphaz. Is a religious dogmist whose dogmatism rests upon the mysterious and remarkable experience. And then what we're going to read a little bit later. Did the spirit ever pass before Job's face? Did Job's hair of his flesh ever stand up? Then let him be meek while one is so superior as Eliphaz declares the causes and his misfortunes. Eliphaz says many true things, as do the others, and often rises into eloquence, but it remains hard and cruel, and dogmatist, who must be heard because of one remarkable experience. Again, a lot of things are going to be right, but against Job is where they're wrong. If we assay, that's the only time that word shows up, examine, to commune with thee, Job, wilt thou be grieved? I mean, Job just let it all go. I wish I was dead. And I can't remark on somebody as such a suffrage. Because I don't know. I didn't lose all my possessions. And you would liken this to somebody who, chapter 1, a tornado came and wiped out everything. It's the only way I could relate it to. Destruction of a tornado. And then, after the tornado comes, he goes the next day to the doctor's office, and he finds out, you know, you got this incurable condition. I got no remedy for you. And I'm not going to say it's terminal, because, you know, it's not death. It's just you're going to have to suffer. And no one can help you. And there are probably ointments and all that for boils, but he's got them all over his face. He's got them all over his trunk of his body. He's got them over the, the, the legs and his hands and his arms and feet. And so he loses it after seven days and seven nights. And you would expect someone to break out and ball and... We're human. Only one that would not have done that would have been Jesus. And yet the Bible says he groaned in spirit. He says, I thirst upon the cross. <laughs> Behold, thou, Job, has instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. All right, he's been a help to others. Thy words have upholded him. That has that was fallen. Thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. And as we go through the book of Job, we're going to see more and more about Job. And we're going to read more and more of his, his true character. Later on, we're going to find out that Job is a judge in the gates. And what Eliphaz says here, people came to Job in the gate and he relieved them. He counseled them for the good. Very true statement. Verse 5. But now, it is come upon thee, and thou faintest. That's the only time that word faintest shows up. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. Well, would you not expect it? I mean, that's like saying, again, and I don't want to be cruel, but you're going down the road and you ran somebody over with your car. A big SUV. Flat. And you go into the hospital and say, does it hurt? <laughs> what do you mean it hurts? I only was going 10 miles per hour. So I read the first charge, the charge against Job. And why, are you, why did you have that fit of anger? I mean, you're taking care of other people, yeah. I guarantee you, I've heard stories from doctors 
And they do get cases where they've helped people and they get sad cases about children and, and, and people that they really love and get. And they go off into a room somewhere and they cry and they and they mourn and they, over their patients. It gets to them. I have been told at the city morgues that one of the things is that the person that does, you know, the operations and the assistant, they get a stream bad case that comes on their table and the circumstances is they do their job but they go off mourning and in tears it happens to the best of us what are you talking about elephant are you so cold yourself elephant is saying and he's not saying i told you so he's telling something to work how come you can you're a hypocrite that's what he's saying no, Job's not a hypocrite. Job is a human being that sins just like you and I, has feelings and has sorrows and has pains just like us. So, he loses all his livestock. He loses his servants, but three or four of them. His children die in one afternoon. His wife comes up and says, curse God and die. He is body covered with boils. And the first friend that speaks up and says, you're a hypocrite. There you just be quiet and listen. There are many people, Christians, who open their mouths and they ought not to open their mouths. You don't know. And I've had that happen with my life. I've had it in trying times. I've had it with death. And I've been, you know, you ought not be crying. Shut up. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and thy uprightness of thy words? Well, let's Let's look at chapter 3, verse 25. For this thing which I greatly fear is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Eliphaz, were you, were you listening? Or is Eliphaz taking that knife that's in Job and let me stretch it a little harder. Yeah, yeah this is your fear. That's cruel. That is very cruel. Job just told him, hey, everything that's happened, this is my fear. Is this your fear, you hypocrite? That's what he's saying. He's making matters worse. Now, okay, Job, this has happened. Uh, you've helped other people and it's come upon. This is not the time to be saying it. He just buried 10 children. His fields probably maybe still on fire. Who knows where his wife is? Sometimes you can be cruel. Remember, I pray thee. Okay, remember. Oh, this, here we go. Whoever perished, whoever died, being innocent, Jesus, but, you know, they don't know about Jesus yet. Okay, the remark is, well, who's ever died that did not deserve to die? What just happened to Job? He just had 10 children die. He had a bunch of servants die. And livestock. Eliphaz comes up. Remember, brightly, whoever perished being innocent. That's not the words to say to a man who just had a family die. Your children are guilty. Your children are full of iniquity. Keep on reading. Or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I... Eliphaz have seen, they that plow iniquity, sow wickedness, reap the same. Your children were just killed by a whirlwind. They deserved it, Job. Job, you lost everything because you deserved it. You got exactly what you deserved. You, de you just deserved it. Let me tell you, that's an outright lie for Job. We are told by the Holy Spirit that Job would offer an offering for his children. Whether he was to do it or not do it, we're not under the law. But Job, as, as the husband and father of his family, offered offerings to God in case his children sinned. And if God received that, God accepted it. Eliphaz is way off the handle here. 
Your children deserved it. Now, it is true. Those that sow in iniquity, God is not marked whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap, but not in the case of Job. If a man rejects Jesus Christ, he is going to reap eternity of the eternal fire that burneth forever. God said, the devil said, he eschewed evil. He was perfect. He was upright. Eliphaz, you're wrong. But for common men, yeah, he's right. Not for Job. By the blast of God, they perish. You mean that whirlwind. Which was permission by God, by the devil to do it. Now, I know America is being sent uh, judgment and, and tribulation for her actions against God and the Bible and Jesus Christ. But to say every single tornado, every single earthquake, every single hurricane is all the act of God. You can't say that because you don't know. We're in hurricane season. They do arise and come up this time. Now, you can say when a hurricane hits one part of the, of, of the nation and it's just utter destruction for 24 hours and it comes up to your home and it just dies out. It's just peaceful. It's quiet. And it moves up north. And then big bang again. There's something there. Because that's not the typical route of a hurricane. When a tornado goes through its path and it stops, if you want to call it stop, and there are places saved and it comes back down another area and it does destruction again. Okay, that's somewhere along the line is God. But we got to realize that judgment is of God. Judgment is of the devil. And then just actual, natural, nature things that goes on. God caused David to name Israel, and there was results of the sword of the Lord. The, the, the devil caused David to number Israel. As a result, there was the sword of the Lord. Where is the fine line? Where is the fine line between Job 1 and 2? Even Job doesn't know what's going on. We do because we read the book. Eliphaz hasn't read nothing. Remember, Job is not written yet. Eliphaz can't go, well, Job chapter 1, look at this. You can't do that. So, I don't understand 10 and 11. The roaring of a lion. The lion in the Bible is the devil. Your adversary. Also the Lord Jesus Christ. Lion of the tribe of Judah. The roaring of a lion. Arr! And the voice of a fierce lion. One that's, man, he's just rough. And the teeth of young lions are broken. The old lion perished, death, for lack of prey, food, and the strout lion whelps are scattered abroad. Now, if he's likened to Job as a lion and his family, they're dead, they're not going to get no food, and they're going to leave you. Well, you're just such a great comforter, Eliphaz. Job, this ain't it. Much more is going to happen to you. All right, verses 12 to 21. Interesting stuff. Now a thing was secretly, ooh, secret, brought to me, and my, Eliphaz's ear, received a little thereof. The revelation of a dream. In thoughts. From the visions of the night. Sleeping. Dream. When deep sleep fell on men. Now he's talking about men. Plural. Fear came upon me. So while everybody's sleeping. Upon me. This is what we're going to read. Fear came upon me. And trembling. Which made all my bones to shake. Now we read a perfect example of that. Of Belt Sizer and Daniel. He sees the hand, his hands right on the wall. Oh, what's going on here? Eliphaz is either sleeping, waking from his sleep, or it's nighttime and he sudden, <coughs> sudden fear comes. 
Then a spirit passed before my face. Eliphaz, not Job. That's where Larkin, I mean, that's where uh, Schofield was wrong. It's Eliphaz. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. All right, let's take this. We're going to just look at the reference. Mark chapter 6, 49. I'm going to make a statement, and I'm really not sure, but I personally believe this is so. Mark 6, 49. And the disciples are rectable men of quality. Jesus chose them out. And here's the storm that Jesus walks on the sea. They're out in the storm and they see a man coming at them. But when they saw him, Jesus, walking on the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. Now, are you, the question is, is there ghost? According to Job 4 and Mark chapter 6, and I have not found any scripture to say there isn't, and if I do, I'll report it. But I say there are spirits. And I'm going to say if there are any spirits of the dead, they're devilish spirits. They hang out at the at the cemetery. Well, I know of unclean spirits that hang out in the cemetery at Jesus' time. And I'm not going to give you any full details, but you would ask my wife and I. We think that there's a spirit somewhere. Beyond the shadow of doubt that we can't explain it. And you are in the realm of, of the spirit. Principalities. In high places. But that's all I'm going to say about it. Eliphaz is claiming I saw a ghost. It, the spirit, stood still. But I could not discern the form thereof. Well, that's what they say spirits and ghosts look like. No form. Now, when you go to YouTube videos and all that, oh, see, I, I don't believe half that mess. Like all these things that people say with Bigfoot and, and uh, UFOs. And personally, I told you, I, 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 I've seen UFOs. That's all I'm going to go with that. But does, this Bible, does the Bible speak about a spirit? Yes, it does. An image was before my eyes. So I couldn't really see, but there was an image in front of me. There was silence. And I heard a voice saying. Now he doesn't say that the spirit talk. He says, I just heard a voice. Now here's the voice speaking. Shall mortal, that's the first time that word shows up. Someone who's going to die. Shall mortal man be more just than God? No. Now, what is he applying this? Now, forget about the spirit thing. Now, let's look at verse 17. What's he applying this to Job? Hey, I see the spirit. You know, he says, shall you, a dead man who's going to die, shall you be just in God's eyes? That's what he's saying. Who do you think you are, Job? You think you're, you know, you are, you know, you nothing bad is going to ever happen to you. You're immune to death and tragedy. Are you equal to God? That's what he's saying. Shall a man be more pure, Job, than his maker? And that's the first time that word shows up, maker. No way. That's not what Job is thinking. Where do you get the idea in chapter 3 that Job thinks he's higher than God? We read chapter 3. Go through chapter 3 again. All Job wants to do is, I want to be relieved of the pain. Kill me. I did not want life's troubles upon me. I wish I was dead. Eliphaz is like, you know, who do you think you are? You think your life is going to be simple? and You think you're going to have the prosperity gospel? No, Job didn't say that. I would assume that everybody would think at least once in a time they wish it was, they wish they were in glory. They wish they had not been born with the troubles they're going through. 
Didn't he say something about a man that has iniquity is going to reap the same? Does not the Bible say, Be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. Did not God say that? God will come at the end of the chapter, after the end of the book, and say, You know, you guys need to put an offering up. I feel sorry for Eliphaz because I think he's going to. Now, we're not going to find out. It is not about Eliphaz. But what if God. Okay, Mr. Big Mouth. Shall I apply to your life when you first open up your mouth to Job? Come on. You want to go at it? Who do you think you are to bad mouth Job? Who do you think you are to rebuke Job? All right, it's your turn, buddy. Be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man sows, that he shall also reap. You open up your big mouth when you should not open up your big mouth. God's going to say, okay, let's see how you do. That's the holy and righteousness of God. Behold, he, God, put no trust in his servants. I wouldn't trust myself either. I'm a servant. And God has told me to do things and I didn't do it. And God has told me not to do things and I've done it. Absolutely true. He puts no trust in his servant. But who is he speaking to? Speaking to Job. God can't trust you, Job. You know what Job will do by the time we get to chapter 42? Job is going to open up a lot of revelation. He's going to leave a lot of answers, questions too. And Eliphaz is going to be rebuked by God in the end. His angels he charged with folly. Now guess who those angels would be? The fallen angels. Not one pure holy angel before God has any folly. Folly does not show up to God. Folly did not follow Jesus. The Holy Spirit has no folly. So there's been a revelation here. We saw chapter 1, the sons of God. We saw chapter 2, the sons of God. We see here, there are angels that have folly. Those are the fallen angels. And definitely God's not going to cho choose them. There's one place in the Bible, one of the kings, God says, I'll send a lying spirit to him. I'll send one of Satan's ambassadors to take care of that guy. Now, is Eliphaz going so far to say that Job is of the devil? Because the reference goes to the evil the angels. Man, he's just false applying to Job. But, and true, true, shall mortal man be more just than God? No, absolutely not. Shall a man be more pure than his maker? What about when we get to glory? What about when we stand in the streets of uh, Jerusalem? New Jerusalem. We'll have a brand new body without sin, without tears, without trouble, without problems. And yet our Savior is still marked. Now I'm going to be careful with what I say because I'm not going to put us above Jesus. Because those marks were marked by the gospel of Jesus that saved our soul. Behold, he puts no trust in his servant. Can God really trust us all? No. Absolutely not. All of us have done or not done what God's told us to do and not do. All of us. True. 100% true. His angels he charged with folly. There are angels that have failed God and he, you're a fool. What's the foolishness of those angels? you in glory. You're before the throne. You see what's happened to the devil. You, you know the holiness of Jesus. You know, <coughs> you know the pureness of heaven and you still follow Lucifer? That's stupid. Bible term, that's foolish. My term, that's stupid. And people say, show me Jesus. There are angels that live with God forever how long he made them, and they still go against God. How much less in them that dwelleth in houses of clay, that's me, that's you, we are made of dirt. Genesis 2. That's a true statement. Whose foundation is in the dust. Well, evidently, Eliphaz believes in the creation of God and believes in the story of the creation of God that he made man out of dust and dirt. He does not believe in evolution. Which are crushed before the moth. First time that word shows up, moth. 
We are so weak, a moth can crush us. And there are probably, by that statement, I didn't look at, there are probably moths out there, if they bite you, you, you'll die. Maybe. But I know there are insects out there. There are animals of the insect kingdom. They can kill you. Or they can give you much disease and trouble. They, man, are destroyed from morning to evening. Death happens all the time. Death happens every day. There are people who don't wake up in the morning and there are people who have not gone to sleep at night because of death. True. Very true. But remember, he's talking to a man that's had his children and his servants die. This is not the proper time. They perish forever. Now, they don't have no revelation of Abraham's bosom. They don't have no revelation of heaven. They do know about hell. You know, don't preach about hell. There was more knowledge of hell, the pit, than there was what heaven was like. Without any regarding. That's the, there's only two places that word shows up. There's the first time. Philippians 2.30. Regarding. Alright. Give me the name today, just today, September 14th. 2019, of all the people that died in the country of India. Come on, give it to them. You had no regard for their, and people who loved them. Go to China and say, China, how many people died today in Florida? They don't care. You know, when we do die, when I die, I'm going to make a small little drop in the world when I die. Not everybody's going to come to my funeral. I'm going to have people in my family. I'm going to have people who I know who won't come to my because of my standard of the Bible in Jesus Christ. Many people won't care about your death. Job, your family just died. Who cares? Whoa! <laughs> Remember, he just had his, his ten children die. You know, they all die every, you know, morning, evening. They all perish and not everybody regards it. Does not there, the people who die, excellency, which is in them, go away. They die even without wisdom. Well, that's true. Not for Job and his family. Kings, queens, presidents, Prime ministers, nobles, they're all going to die. And when they die, they have no more knowledge, no more wisdom, no more understanding. You can have a doctor take a well, doctor today, he can have all knowledge to heal all cancer. As soon as he's dead, it ain't gonna do him no good. He's dead. Ain't nothing gonna happen to him no more. <laughs> 